In chapter 3, question 1 reads, An object measures 2 centimeters high above the axis of an optical system consisting of a 2 centimeter aperture stop and a thin convex lens of 5 centimeter focal length and 5 centimeter aperture. The object is 10 centimeters in front of the lens and the stop is 2 centimeters in front of the lens. Determine the position and the size of the entrance and exit pupils as well as the image. Sketch the chief ray and the two extreme rays through the optical system from the top of the object to its conjugate image point. Now there's a sketch already provided which I started drawing before I turned the camera on but I haven't completed it yet so let's finish drawing the sketch uh, just so you can see when I reference it. Uh, right here is the object and it's two centimeters high. This is the optical axis and 10 centimeters away from the optical axis is the lens which is five centimeters high and has a five centimeter focal length. Uh, two centimeters to the left of that you have the aperture stop, a two centimeter aperture stop. <clears throat> so here's our, our diagram. Uh, and this is 10 centimeters here. So let's first start by determining our known variables and uh, so the first variable we know is the object height which we will need at some point so let's write down h for object height equals 2 we know the object distance is 10 centimeters and we also know the focal length is five centimeters and we know the height of the aperture stop is two centimeters and we know the position or the distance of the aperture stop which is two centimeters. Now the variables we're going to have to solve for uh, as the question asks is to determine the position and size of the entrance and exit pupils. So we need the position of the entrance pupil we need the size or the height of the entrance pupil. We also need the size of the exit pupil and the height of the exit pupil. And lastly, we need the image distance, S prime, and image height h prime so this is what we need this is what we have now without using any math we can already solve for some of these variables by following some of the simple rules so the fact that the aperture stop is in front of the lens uh, it effectively means that the entrance pupil is the same as the aperture stop. So the position and the height of the entrance pupil will be the same as the position and the height of the aperture stop which we have here. So uh, position of the entrance pupil is the position of the aperture stop which is just two. The height of the entrance pupil is the same as the height of the aperture aperture stop which is just two and then uh, at this point we need to we can make a, another assumption uh, 
that since the position of the aperture stop is less than the focal length, we know the uh, the entrance pupil is also well. It's going to be the same uh, as we determined already anyway. Um, so now let's call the distance between the lens and the exit pupil right here uh, S E X P. Um, to find that we use basically the lens formula so let's start over here make sure we can see this here okay so using the, the thin lens formula uh, we can use the focal length is equal to 1 over the focal length is equal to 1 over the distance but in this case it's the distance of the entrance pupil plus 1 over the it would be s prime but in this case it's the distance of the exit pupil so we fill in our knowns we have 1 over 5 equals 1 over s e n p which is 2 over 1 over the distance of the exit pupil. Now uh, we can solve for the exit pupil uh, just by subtracting the half from both sides and then finding the reciprocal. So ultimately we will get our distance of the exit pupil to be equal Two. Uh, comes out to be negative ten over three, which we will just call negative three point three three centimeters. Uh, now the fact that it's a negative distance tells us that it's to the left or in front of the lens. Uh, our lens is right here. Uh, two centimeters away is the aperture stop and 1.33 centimeters further is where the uh, the exit pupil is. So it happens to be pretty much right where I drew this line before. Uh, that was just a coincidence. So now we can fill in this new variable. Uh, we'll call it negative 3.33. Okay. And this takes us to the next step. So we have the position of the exit pupil. Now we need to find the height of the exit pupil. Uh, we can use the magnification equation. Okay. But replace the variables the same way we replace the variables for the thin lens equation and doing that the magnification equation gives us negative the entrance pupil distance divided by the exit pupil distance and that is equal to the height of the entrance pupil divided by the height of the exit pupil. <sighs> it's easy to mix these up. Okay, so three of these variables we already know. The one we're trying to solve for is the height of the exit pupil right here. So let's multiply both sides by the height of the exit pupil then divide by this quantity which will leave us the height of the exit pupil to be equal to negative the distance of the exit pupil divided by the distance of the entrance pupil times the height of the entrance pupil. Fill in the values and we get uh, negative 
distance of exit people is positive 3.33 divided by the distance of the entrance pupil, which we know here, which is 2, times it by the height of the entrance pupil, which we know is 2. The 2's cancel, and we're left with a height of 3.33. All right, next variable we need to find is the image distance and the image height. With this, we can use just the regular old thin lens formula again, which is 1 over f is equal to 1 over s plus 1 over s prime. s prime is the image distance we're trying to solve for. So with some algebraic manipulation, we can find that s prime is equal to s times f over s minus f. Fill in the variables. We have uh, s being equal to 10, f being equal to 5, 10 minus 5. Uh, this gives us 50 over 5, which is just 10 centimeters. So our image distance is 10 centimeters, which tells us that 10 centimeters to the right of the lens, which is somewhere over here, which I'm not going to draw just yet, is where the image is. Now we have to find what the height of the image is. To do that, we can use the magnification equation, which simply gives us negative the image distance over the object distance is equal to the image height over the object height. We're trying to find the image height. So to solve for it, we just multiply both sides by h. And we can determine that h prime is equal to negative s prime which is negative 10 over s, which is 10 times h, which is 2. And the answer is negative 2. Can we see that? Yes, we can. So negative 2. What that means is just that the image is inverted. So it has a height of 2, but it's upside down. The last step of this problem asks us to sketch the chief ray and the two extreme rays through the optical system. From the top of the object to its conjugate image point. So let me get another piece of paper. We will make that sketch. So by the way, this whole row column here are basically the solutions to this problem. Now to make the sketch, let's quickly redraw what we already have, which is the object. Here's the top of the object. Here's the optical axis. Oh, here's our aperture stop. And here's our lens. And the same distance from the object to the lens, we have the, uh, the image. So let's extend this a little further. Mark where we have the image. We know that it's two centimeters inverted. Okay, so here's our image. Here's our object. Uh, the chief ray begins at the top of the image and extends basically to the bottom of the image or the conjugate image point. So I'm going to try to draw this nicely. And there we go. This is the chief ray. And the two extremes, uh, one of them, well they both start at the top of the object. Uh, one of them goes to the top of the aperture stop 
<clears throat> and then it hits yeah, eh, close enough then it hits the lens and gets refracted to the image along the point of the image along the optical axis okay so here's we'll call this extreme one the other extreme ray starts at the same spot but goes to the bottom of the aperture stop and it keeps going at the angle till it hits the lens again when it hits the lens it gets refracted and in fact it gets refracted to the bottom of the image so there we go that we'll call that X2 so these should be the three rays required in this problem so there's your diagram here's your solutions once more